It's always exciting to watch Mind Pump on YouTube. You know why? Because we're amazing. Also, because we give away free stuff. Today's giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Somebody will get free access to one of our best bodybuilding-inspired workout programs. Is that going to be you? I don't know, but here's how you enter. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you, and you get free access to that incredible workout program. Also, two programs are on 50% off sale right now. So MAPS Suspension and MAPS Performance are both 50% off. Go sign up or just go learn more at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50. That's SEPTEMBER50 for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. So I don't want to uh, put any pressure on you guys here. Uh-oh, what's going uh -oh. on, Doug? Are we recording this? What are you going to tell us? <laughs> Please don't apply the pressure. Well, I have to brag a little bit. What? You never brag. This must be good. What? Yeah. So I got back my testosterone results. Oh, oh God. shit. Let's see Let this. me guess. Oh, through the roof. Bro, it's going like to be embarrassing. All you're better than all of us. And um, Oh, I, I, shit. 1,039? A, a yes. <laughs> Wow. 1,039, <laughs> which happens to be up from last time back in March where I tested at 954. Oh, you were wow. you were low at 954. Yeah. Now you're over 1,000? Wow. Yes. Bro, that is, you know how I swear, at Doug. 55 years old to have numbers like 56, that. 56, by the way. Oh, sorry, 56. Wow. Dude, he's, I I'm, I, look, I know I joke around about him being a vampire, I don't but I'm trying to take it seriously now a little bit. I don't yeah, think I've right. ever had a client his age test this high no I have never seen that. no I had one guy I trained a long time wow. ago who was 40 and he had uh, 900 or whatever but this is insane that's the highest I've had a client I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever had a client this over 900 this is natural testosterone yes and remember last year we did that test with that other company yeah I was around what around close to 600 at that time yeah 600 mm -hmm. or 700 I thought you were which around. is not bad at all which is not bad it's so, like a silverback okay. gorilla is there like is there yeah, like so a, what is happening 600 900 a th what are you doing yeah. okay so the first thing I did is I was very inconsistent with my sleep okay and so I uh, really started focusing on getting to bed earlier and sleeping longer. So my goal has been get eight hours of sleep a night. Which this is something that I know you've been bad about for a long yes, time. Yes, for a very long time. I burned the midnight oil. Uh, you know, all the doctors, like the Ayurvedic doctor I work with, my acupuncturist, all these, you know, Eastern style doctors say you have to be to, be to bed by 1030. You need at least eight hours of sleep. Okay. And so I don't always hit the 1030, but I've gotten like around 11 and sometimes 10.30, and I've been getting eight hours of sleep. On weekends, sometimes it's nine hours of sleep, and I've been really focused on improving my sleep. Okay. Now, have you have you noticed a difference, too? Because, I mean, now that we have Andrew and Gio, and they've taken a lot of uh, producing off your plate, are you doing less screen time at nighttime, too? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I bet those two things have made a big difference in themselves. What uh, else? Is okay, it the other thing, I, 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 I say my diet and everything is pretty consistent. I You're may have up. You're up my uh, protein though. Okay. I have up my protein some. But your diet was good before. It was good before. Yeah. My diet was good. I just, I think I under ate protein a lot. So I up my protein. I don't know if that, that has anything to do with it. Sure. Uh, but the other thing was I'd heard a lot about Juve and how it helps ah. increase your testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. and I think, was it Mike Mutzel? It's Mike Mutzel who DM'd me and got me doing this first for So I, I've had DMs of guys who've raised their testosterone by 20, 30% from consistent. Okay. Yeah, Mike went from, I think, 600 to 900 or 408. So he had a huge yeah. jump. And so for a very long time, like several months, almost every day, right before bed, I have a, a panel, a juve panel in my bathroom. It hangs on the door and I have a little chair in my bathroom, I'm like foldable cha so you're chair. So just naked in front of the I'm, red light. I'm just naked in yeah. front of this thing. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to picture it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I can guarantee you can't it's can't a sight to yourself. behold. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I How sit. Long? It's got to be a big panel. Let me tell I you. mean, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sit and uh, sometimes I'm on the phone with the girlfriend yeah. at that time. So it can be 20 minutes, it can be 30 minutes, it can be 15 minutes, something like that. But okay. I'm just sitting there Listening. letting it shine where the sun doesn't normally shine. Right. Mm. And uh, I've been doing that quite consistently for several months. You know, Ben Greenfield's really consistent with this too. And I don't know if I've ever heard him share. I don't listen to his podcast uh, enough. I wonder if he's actually shared his results like this. Cause you and Mike now are the only two people that, I, that I've seen. Oh, he did. He did. And it went up and what he did is he put a panel yeah, like on, right on your balls. Yeah. Un, right? Like he'll, he'll, he has a standing computer and yeah. so he'll work on it and yeah, he'll I've be standing it. there naked yeah. and he's got the red light underneath him. Cause he's yeah. shining it up as the bonch ball area, which yeah. apparently 
uh, will increase. So what it does is the red light goes in and it stimulates the mitochondria to produce more energy. And if it's the mitochondria in the testes or the skin or wherever you shoot it, that mitochondria is going to perform uh, better. Did you do this between the 900 and 1,000 reading? Like, what, like yes. when did, Oh, okay. definitely, definitely. Okay. So this is, uh, the 900 was in March, and I did this in July, I believe, or, yeah, August. Wow. Wow. That yeah, is so that's, impressive. That's super impressive. Yeah, and you're like also the, you're really like fucking a Sleep and juve. You're like, no. <laughs> dude, this guy, we all got COVID. It was all mildish for all of us, but Doug, literally, this is true. Don't lie, Doug. Literally, this is what he said. <laughs> I feel a little under the weather day one. And then the next day, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm okay. Date That was day two. And the rest of us were like, wow, what the hell is Speaking going on? Speaking of COVID, I had someone DM me about, because uh, they were they were going through it and they've were and I they heard me talking about the, the have me having kind of the long form of it and still having some stuff. Yeah. And they told me that uh, they, they too had some issues with their, their lungs and they had had pneumonia before in the past. So they went and saw a doctor afterwards and they had them doing uh, vaporizing or nebulizer or what, what, one of those. Nebulizer, with, I think. With uh, the glutathione. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. that was really interesting because I know you had me taking the glutathione religiously. That was like the first thing you said to get on. Well, glutathione and vitamin D are now connected to more severe um, forms of, uh, of COVID um, in a couple studies. The issue with glutathione is, is absorption. So in the past, if you were to take glutathione orally, you're, it would be destroyed in the gut and you wouldn't really absorb it well. Now, they have different forms of glutathione that have now been shown in studies to increase blood levels of glutathione. So Live On, the company we work with, uses, uh, you know, they, they do this liposomal encapsulation kind of process. That is absorbable. But if you if you just buy glutathione and it doesn't have this kind of delivery system, you have to take a lot to kind of make a difference or it won't at all. So you make where sure you else, use the right form. Where else would you get glutathione? Like, I've never oh, seen it good. until you yeah, until live on. It's, yeah, I'm just curious about that. And too, like you wouldn't find it in certain food groups, like like sulfurous food groups, or like where where would you that's find it? That's a good it? question. I know it's it's called like the master or something. The master antioxidant. Yeah. And it's in the liver, producing liver. Supplementing with glutathione theoretically should improve liver function. Um, in studies, they'll show people having better skin, better health, immune system function, of course. And the way that they used to do it was all intravenous. So uh, mm -hmm. you'd have to get it through in, in the blood because you take it orally. Like an IV it. or an injectable? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so sulfur-rich foods uh, are, oh, yeah. is one way one way to do it that's it. that's what it says so broccoli okay. kale things like that yeah mm -hmm. uh probably eggs i would imagine eggs, yeah, probably those. high in, in, in that's why when you take anything the, that smells a little funky no i that, wonder that's how, why when you take the live on thing you open the packet it yeah. smells like yeah it's the sulfur. condensed version of all that yeah. no yeah no it does it does have a kind of a rotten egg type of taste it, ta yes. it tastes like it's effective for sure that's, <laughs> that's how, i tell it people, tastes well, like it's working that's how i say yeah. that you know why because I, I mean if you it's not one of those supplements like a pre-workout like bubblegum flavor you're not going to get that experience no it's a fart in a packet yeah. But I just thought it was interesting because <laughs> literally I had never heard of glutathione until you had me taking it. Yeah. And then then the whole live on thing happens that we start working with them. And then I get this person who's talking to me in DMs, COVID, and the first thing they tell me that they, they have you do is the nebulizer with glutathione. Thought, well, oh, that's crazy. Well, here's so here's some fun, you know, put on your conspiracy theory hats here. So <laughs> NAC uh, is short for something I can't pronounce, but this is a supplement that you has been that around. Yeah, and acetylcysteine. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. This supplement has been around for 20 years, and it's been sold at every health food store, super inexpensive. You could buy it. Well, anyway, studies were showing that it could be an effective natural supplement to fight severe forms of COVID. What does NAC do when you take it? It dramatically raises glutathione levels oh. in the blood. Now, here's the conspiracy part. After 20 years of this supplement, which is safe and very low risk and whatever been, being available, all of a sudden the FDA moves to take this off the market and make a prescription. So now everybody's up in arms. Like, what the hell are you doing? Did, isn't this what happened? Didn't yeah. ivermectin? Was it, cause everyone no, thinks no, ivermectin, ivermectin is just a horse, a horse thing, but it's also that's a prescribed. That's a prescription drug that's been around for decades. But that, didn't they didn't they shut it down, though, recently? No, what they, oh, did, they didn't. No, what it is is that other countries are using it and are reporting that it's effective for, uh, for COVID treatment. And now there's some controversy um, surrounding ivermectin. And so you see both sides now kind of doing some funny stuff. People saying it's horse medicine. 
it's been prescribed probably to over a billion people. So I have some friends the- that, that went through this, right? They got COVID and their doctor actually prescribed it to them. Yes. Yeah. So there's- That's so there's, off-label. So, okay. So, okay. So, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I won't roll someone under the bus then. Yeah, no, no. It's off-label. Are they like not supposed to do that? Like According to the FDA here in the States, no. But, you know, doctors can, they can get around that. In India, South America, Africa, Brazil- uh, people are there. It's it's standard of care for some areas for for COVID. Um, so that's where the controversy is. But that's a prescription drug. It's been a re- available for decades. The NAC is the interesting one because that was a supplement, and all of a sudden they're like, "Ah, we're taking this off the market." Isn't that nice? That's yeah. weird. So convenient. Was it really timed like that, or is it, are you? Yes. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Out of nowhere. So it wasn't like six months before the pandemic. No, it was man. like right when it. Started. Yeah, dude. It is really annoying, and you got you got to you know. And again, I'm not saying that this is a true conspiracy or not but boy is it do these regulatory agencies work in lockstep with uh big pharma oftentimes yeah. in fact most of the time people who run these regulatory agencies before they did that were uh you know on the panel or boards for these pharma companies yeah so what so the, the well, way you know it, that's happened with it's the fda guy right the, is it the 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 guy who's who what he was FDA executive and they now go back he, and forth and now he's for I think Pfizer or one of those they companies. go back and forth all this happens with banking <laughs> regulations it happens with business regulations it happens so what happens is the, you know the thought is you're a big pharma executive you're lobbying government all the time because government regulates your industry so you're stupid not to right so if you work in an industry that's heavily regulated by the government, they can dictate your success or not, right? So what you do mm-hmm. is you pay lobbyists to go talk to politicians, what can we do? And then you make, I'm sure there's deals, and you become friends. And then next thing you know, when I retire from far, you know, you know, know, Pfizer, I'll get a, you know, a nice position at the FDA, or vice versa. When I leave the FDA, I'll get hired as a consultant for whatever I, I find it company. so interesting when something like that happens, like how divided the two sides get. You get one side that goes so hard, conspiracy, like it was all planned and it's yeah, like, no. and then you have the other side that just dismisses it like it's not a big deal it's like, like humans like, don't do that yeah exactly like oh you mean to tell me like somebody who's in that position doesn't ever manipulate power like yeah. come on well, you've <laughs> we never see seen this, examples we of see corruption. examples of that all the time Dude, so give me a break but then you have the other side who's just like it blows it into this massive conspiracy and stuff like that it's like you know so yeah. i think we're somewhere in the middle can where, we just look at yeah like how they're profiteering you know just look at the money, the the money aspect too. of it not even the conspiracy of the global they're trying to, you know, kill us all. <laughs> yeah. No, just like where's the money going and yeah. who are they trying to snuff out of this entire process? Yeah, and it's it's also, I mean, come on, let's be honest, it's human nature, okay? I've owned businesses for since I was a kid and if you're my friend and you come into my business, right, right. you're going to pay less or nothing right. than th- this unknown person. Right. I give favors and I treat people I care about and know personally differently than strangers why relation- all the time. Relationships are like one of the most important yeah, things. Yeah, so take that to the extreme level, right? Let's yeah. say you're a super integrity government official. Let's say you're super honest. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. you know. That's kind you of can't a, sit on the street That's called an oxymoron hey, right there. Right? Hey, imagine. <laughs> we got to play the, the little, magic. Little Big League. Is, there, is, is that, that a thing? Is that, that's a unicorn. Play the, yeah. play the, play the, the magic music. Oh, let's just say, yeah. for example, that was you, <laughs> yeah, right? Let's, let's pretend in fairyland. Yeah. And let's say let's say that's me. Let's say I'm, I'm the Mr. Integrity government guy. I'm going to do everything honest. <laughs> and then Adam runs one uh, you know defense company, private defense company. And and then there's four other guys and they come and they present to me. Adam is ahead because I trust him. I know him. You know, I care about the guys. It's yeah. the way it works. So yeah. to say that doesn't happen, like, come on. You know, I think it it, to, to take the other side, I do think a lot of people get into public service things with, with the right intentions. Yeah. But in order to climb all the way to I the I think top, that's rare. I do. I think it's a little rare. I don't know. Maybe it's. I think it's very rare. Maybe it's. Maybe it's not as rare as you think it is. And but they're quick to get manipulated. Do you know, do you know the way it used to be? What you should get shut out right away. Well, the way it used to be was if you worked uh, for the public, so you worked for government. That was not your job. You that was part time. You right, were like volunteer, volunteer, right? Yeah, right. or it was like a part time thing, and you did other shit. When it became a career. Now you've got. I mean, have you seen how long people continue to get reelected over and over and over oh and over? It's God. like it's it's like guaranteed. Like no one's going to kick you out. There's well, no threat. That's why, yeah, it's hard to get them to fight anything controversial, you know, because they always want to make sure that they're going to be reelected. Oh, it's, well, it's, I imagine what you're alluding to right now too. The the most powerful part about being a public official like that is the relationships you make. 
And it's probably less about when you're in office and it's more about Dude. what ha the lifelong relationships that you build Bro, after do you know, that. Do you know what your annual salary is if you work Not in Congress? Not very much It's at like all. 200 grand a year? Yeah, yeah. The president's is like three to 500. 400, I think. Four, yeah, it's like yeah. news that How in the hell are they millionaires when they get out of office? You know how many congressmen All the people? special interest groups. It's fucking... Dude, come on. <laughs> it is <laughs> It's wild. like everybody sees it. Like, let's just talk about it for once and be honest. <laughs> yeah. like, it's just ridiculous, yeah. the oh, corruption. Have, speaking of... Corruption, crazy government stuff. Did you guys see the? This is really interesting. I couldn't. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about it. I hope you haven't read it yet, so I could share it. Did you see what China just released yesterday as a new law? As a new law, was it the kids can't play video games? Yes, I saw that. It was like what? three hours They're, a week or something. No, no, like no. That? They're limiting to one hour a night between. No, the, no a week. No, no, no. It's one hour, okay. one hour a night between eight and nine p.m. Oh, they and then they. So it used to be this. I didn't know they had already done this. So it was already limited to one hour a day plus three hours on weekends and holidays. Oh, I didn't know that. And okay. they've now cut out the weekends and holidays, and it's purely one hour. And they're holding all the gaming uh, consoles and companies accountable to this. So that, I mean, if you if you log in to play a game, you're on. You, they have an IP address, so they yeah, can track yeah, okay. all this. So they are going to be holding the companies responsible to make sure they put in the right barriers to keep these kids. <laughs> and if they exceed that, it's going to go against their social credit score, I'm That's right. sure, which is then going to fuck now, them. Here's what I want to talk to you guys about. This is this is the interesting part about you know, communist countries that have all oh, this control. You tread carefully. Adam. I know. I know you're going to this. This gets your your liberty cackles going like crazy. Oh, I feel and, them already. And, <laughs> but. And, and and I'm going to play this game because I don't I don't of course agree with this, but when you have so much control, data and and on on all your your population people, you can see things quicker than like us in a free society. A free society, we allow everyone to kind of do whatever they want, and then over time we do research and we look back like, oh, that was a bad idea for yeah. ten years to do this. Now we've learned and we go the other direction, right? So that's the beauty of a, a free country like what we live in. The, the positive thing, okay, if there is anything of living in a communist country that has real-time data, control of everything, they can see the writing on the wall a little bit earlier. So my thing that I was telling Katrina last night, I'm like, you know, agree with this or disagree with what China is doing. There's something for us to learn from this because they know even more about the they long- see how de detrimental those behaviors that's are. That's right. They've got all the data yeah. to support what's been happening to the kids in the last decade that have been playing- even the the minimal hours that they were allowing, and they're so. What does that tell you? They're cutting back even further than what they they were already restricting compared to here, and then after a decade or so of data on all this stuff, they're pulling back even yeah. more. You know, that's always the the allure of of course of, of power and control. Of course, is that yeah. we know better. Yeah. yeah, we know more than you. And if everybody just does what we tell them, then we'll be better off. Now, historically speaking. Freer societies always do better. Well, and they give you that choice, right? They no. always do better in health, longevity. They do better in you know quality of life and innovation and you know, all almost everything. Ingenuity. Yeah, all they that. do better. Now think about it this way. And by the way, this is this is the same thing as saying you have kids, and you know what? If I could just control my kids and they right, do right. imagine if you raised your kid that way, where they did everything you said exactly because they were afraid of you, would that turn out better for them? Or would that turn well, out? Not worse? only that, but right. you you fuck the the minority that is thirty to forty percent of the kids that actually can actually video game for three hours every single day, still get straight A's, still be productive, and still be positive to society, yeah. right? So yeah. just because your data comes out and shows that wow, a majority of kids that play for this long, this happens. You 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 also you know what? Isolate I know those. I know in South Korea it's big. You know the whole major league gaming uh, huge aspect of that, right? So is that part of Chinese culture? Like, do they have professional video game players and how's this going to affect them? That's a good question. That's a really good know. question because, yeah. yes, they do. They absolutely have right? prof professional it's teams. It's huge in, in, in all of Asia, that, pretty much. That would be what st state-sponsored, though, right? Like, when I watched that yeah. uh, that that show on Caitlyn Jenner and, they, and she talked about the Soviet Union and how they pluck children you know, and pull them from their families, and oh, this one looks talented. Now you're you're working for the state, and we're going to train and develop you. Yeah, and you know what's Russians funny? Russians did that with athletes. By too. the way, you know what's funny about that? Here you go. I love this. Here's the thing about sports: is they're objective, right? Why does America generally out compete the Soviet Union and China? By the way, well, China has how many people? <laughs> One point three billion. Okay, yeah. so they have way more people than we do, and they pluck kids and spend. They they find talent. They actually spend a lot of money and energy on this. 
And yet we kicked their ass at the last Olympics and the one before that and the one before that. And we did this often with the Soviet well, Union. But yeah, but okay. Again, playing devil's advocate here, you there, there's definitely a, a genetic advantage. Soviet Union, what are you, what are you going to okay, say? Okay, no, them, they, that's, well, di- that's a difference. And, and, and they actually normally they normally win until we kind of piece together what it was that they were doing. And in, we, in certain sports, they definitely were they, did. Yeah, in the Olympics back, I mean, that's who uh, Jenner beat. Yes, was a, but was generally a, speaking, the U.S. being a smaller country with way less of a population, people pursuing their own self-interest. Remember, Caitlyn Jenner's story Nothing was state sponsored. Did it on her own. Yeah, she he had to figure that out though. He figured that out, put that work in, and where, it works. Where in somewhere like Russia, they they force it upon you and get there. So they may get there fast. It's just like this the argument we're making right now with China. Like they may figure out this video game thing with kids faster than we do as a free country because they have more data to support it. And then do what- they figure it out, or are the people being forced? Here's what's happening: they are taking the place of your parents. And they're trying to take a pla- taking the place of religion. Listen, and I, I am not by yeah. no means defending this this yeah. communist. What I'm saying, and my point is, is that there's there's things to potentially as Americans to learn from that. Not as oh, if it's a petri dish that we're watching sort of like unfold. And what to learn from is not oh this is how we should run our state. That's not what the fuck I'm saying right now. Yeah. It's that oh wow they have some research and data on and controlled stuff that we don't have yet that we have to wait longer for because we live in a free country and that we we have to get that information that information has to be given to us it has over to be Okay, that's so, right. Yeah. And then then we can go back and go like, oh, fuck, what we were letting our kids do all day long maybe well, wasn't a good idea. Well, you do know. So the philosophy behind communism uh, in some of these totalitarian uh, systems comes from Karl Marx, right? Marxism from Marx. And if you read Marxism, the whole theory was that the working class, right? They broke people up by working class and ruling class and other, you know, modern variations now divide people differently. But it really was the working class rises up, does this revolution, takes all the production and owns it all and d- divides it up. And then eventually government disappears and everybody works together in harmony. This was, now it never works this way, right? It always turns into death, destruction. Why is government never disappear? Tyranny. Hmm. So the idea is, gosh, if everybody just worked together, how much better off would be? That's true. Here's the difference. We have to voluntarily do it. Yeah. Being forced is anti-human nature. So would it be better if children played less video games because they had their parents raise them a certain way and there were good structures? And, or they just yes. decided on their own to play less. Yeah, especially that, right? Or is it that we force them, you know? Yeah, okay. There's a Okay, you guys got to remember this too. You don't allow your kids to regulate their candy consumption either, but, do you? No, but I'm a parent. They'll be educated. I'm their about parent it. though, and it's very different. I'm with them. I yeah. love them. I support them. Well, this we is the, this is what I'm trying to say though. That's they're the, trying to be the that's parent. the part where we we learn about that. We don't we don't learn from yeah. oh what they did as far as a government and we should adopt that. But we learn from the fact that they're on. Like, just, why are they doing? Yeah, that? Like, why yeah. are they doing something like right. this? And and yeah. maybe there should be as parents, all of us should have more communication. Or it should be somewhat alarming. Or right? or yeah. as parents, we should just become a little more aware of this. I yeah. mean, how many how many parents are out there right now that just don't think anything of it? Like yeah. oh. My, uh, who cares that my kids yeah. on the video game for six hours a day every single day? But you know what though? That, that what's interesting about that is sometimes we get a little scared of certain things, and there's definitely uh, a, a spectrum here, right? But you know what they show with kids that play lots of video games who are also not dysfunctional, come from good family, that stuff. They tend to be better. You at can spin every create. Thing. No, I you mean you and I both know you can take a study and spin it any way you I'm want. I'm not spinning it. I'm literally they show that these kids are becoming better. Uh, the good at tech they become good at uh, planning sure, sure. good at ai look at the, the future of they're technology calling it, they're, 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 they had a bunch of research around the, the what's going on in the brain so they're calling it uh spiritual opium so that's what it's been coined as over there weird yeah because of the addictive properties and how it sucks them in like that and it probably makes them like zombies when they yeah. you know that you ever seen your son play yeah. for hours uh, on hours and then what he looks like afterwards? Out is, yeah, that's, yeah yeah that's of course fight. no i'll tell you what i, I mean again it, they could pass a law that makes everybody eat healthy and i agree with the eating healthy part but i disagree with no and, and again i would part. never uh, even for a fitness professional and i know people this big thing's been going on right this division in the health space on the whole covid vaccine thing and, yeah, eating, yeah. and then the people are like oh we should mandate eating healthy or I don't believe in any of that. I don't yeah, want yeah. government mandating anything. Yeah. My point of this discussion and bringing it up is that you know everybody wants to you know because we are the free country and they they are the communist country we want to the, everything is bad everything is wrong it's the they're, forced they're, they're part evil. that's bad I get what yeah, you're saying they're, they're, but is there some advantages that they have temporarily and one of the advantages they will have because they have so much control 
they have they can get on top of things maybe a little bit quicker than we can because we have to wait for our free society to figure it out themselves or divulge that information for us. Well, peering into that and seeing that I think is is something instead of just disregarding it because it's government ran and they're yeah. it's like but as mm. a parent. I feel like you have to maybe wake up or open your eyes yeah. a little bit if it's something you don't pay attention. Now, if you're a parent already and you're aware of this and you're monitoring your kids and you think they have good balance and they have good social skills and then to each their own. That's the beauty of you, America. You know what the, yeah. the, the the drawback, I don't know, this is a drawback for any society, but even for free societies is not the lack of control and laws. It's that uh, it's the, the challenges aren't because we don't have enough laws and regulations. The challenges are because People are not. People are less spiritually healthy. Wisdom is lower, and you. If you have a, a freedom to do whatever you want, but you're an unhealthy person, you're going to make bad choices no matter what. So, a lot of it isn't the top down. It's much lower than that. Like we, people are belong less to groups and have less support. In the past, that used to be church and neighborhood events and neighborhood barbecues, and you see less of that. Less kids now have two parents that are really connected. A lot of kids are getting raised by one parent. That makes things very, very challenging. You're noticing there's this kind of loneliness effect that's starting to happen. Uh, people are, are, are and, and that has far-reaching effects regardless of you know, the I, way society is. I together. get all that and agree with all that. Um, but I also have been somebody who was a, a gamer for a long time. And it, it wasn't until you know almost 30 years old that I kind of put the console down. And they have gotten incredibly good at their jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their job is to keep, just like the social, just keep like Instagram, immersed. just totally. like Facebook, Twitter, their job is to keep you on the platform. And they're, by the way, they are going after young minds that are malleable and impressionable and easy to be manipulated. You know, well, there, there's definite parallels to, uh, you know, what people seek in terms of like what drugs provide too, right? That's an escape. And that's something where I can go, you know, get away from all the, you know, pressures and, and you know, the negative things I'm experiencing in life because all of these things in here are, you know, so amazing. And I can, you know, talk to my friends, you know, it's fun. I can be this new character. I can be a different person like completely. So, you know, there's just, there's some sense of that, uh, the way that they built these video games being so immersive, yeah. like you could just get lost and stay there. Yeah, totally. And, Spiritual and I, opium. I think it's a beautiful name yeah, for it. It is. And I tell you what, uh, you're the perfect person to ask this, Adam, because you're such a self-starter, self-motivator. You like to, you know, have the choices and the freedoms to make those decisions Imagine, and I know to some extent your parents are like this, but imagine if you had extremely overbearing parents to the point where they were like, "No, yeah, no, I this, no. I would have revolted, rebel." Would immediately. you be Would you be better off now or worse off? No, now? I would be. I'd be worse off. I yes, would. Yeah. I would have revolted. So that's why. And and that's. I think that because I know too. I knew when I brought this up for sure. I can. I'm already going to call the fucking comments that are going to come under the YouTube channel. Yeah, everybody relax. Adam's defending fucking China. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy, by the way? Do you know how many DMs I get from people that listen to our podcast from China? Now you know. Our podcast, I don't think is accessible in China. Like, like they get illegally, it. they're listening. Yes, right? yeah, they yeah. and they it's tell so me that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I got a VPN. I got this, and that way I can listen yeah, to your yeah, show. Right. Shout I mean, out, shout out to them. That's super awesome. cool. All right, I got something, something crazy also to tell you guys. Did you guys know that there, there's a roller coaster in Japan? Maybe Doug, you can look this up. I got to look up the stats on this roller coaster. They got sued because somebody broke their bones literally while on the ride. Now I thought what? to myself, like. Did something go wrong? Like, what's the deal with this? A roller coaster? Is this one of the... Because have you ever been on the Grizzly? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a good time. time. Dude, it's so old and like wooden <laughs> and rickety. like <laughs> rickety. Yeah. Like, especially in the back. If you sit in the very back, like you're going to get whiplash. Yeah, you, There's no way you're not going to get whiplash. <laughs> no. So so Shuts this- down after Rutgers broken bone. What broken bones though? Okay. So listen to this. They broke a finger and then- There's they... <laughs> six cases of fractures in total. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. It's called, and now it's a, it's a roller coaster <laughs> in Japan known for its super death- acceleration to triple digit speeds and they had to shut it down because they're like okay the the ride is called sounds awesome maybe doug you can look this He's up got it's it called right up there oh he the ride said, he, yeah, he said a picture it's called do dodanpa i think is the is the name of it so that's it right there it's the world's fastest roller 112 miles an hour bro you ready for this oh, it gets it's like there dropping and, straight and, now. one second one and a half seconds less Holy. than one yeah one one and a half seconds zero to 120 112 do miles we even an hour. have a car that wow. does that I don't. That's like a drag car. Pretty right? close. 
Could you imagine what that's like? I know we have some that zero to six. Yeah, that's, I don't know if we have a car that gets up that quick. Do you guys remember, uh, they changed the name of it, but do you guys remember, so the theme park here that we probably all used to go to as kids was Great America. Yeah. And they used to have the edge. Remember the yeah. edge? Yeah. Did you guys get on that? Yeah, you remember yeah, you used yeah, to put a penny, that. put a penny on your on your thigh right before yeah, you drop. You watch it, like, it hovers. Float. Yeah. So you guys both did the edge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never did the edge. Dude, I never wanted to do you that. You had the biggest well, scaredy cat ever, bro. Maybe. I'm trying to get you to dive and you won't even you die. You remember the That's horror story from, from, from Top Gun? Remember? The, the the new ride when the ride Top Gun came out. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, that's a great Love ride. Love that ride. Right. So your legs like dangle like this as you like swoop through and everything. You know, like somebody literally like soccer kick and decapitated some dude. Is that no, an urban that's legend? Not true. Is that an urban legend? Pull it up. That is not true. <laughs> that is not Pull true, Justin. Is that an urban legend? Killed some like guy. A what? I'm serious. I didn't even think you're come no, on. No, because I'm serious. Well, it like, does it walking through. It was like that one part where I you, know like, there is you a part where you're, underneath you're it. pretty close, but yeah. I, that'd have to be like a nine foot tall guy. I, I'm telling you. And guys, you're going fast, dude. That Fact check happened, this, dude. dude. This is oh. bizarre. Co stars and kills Hayward Man at Great America. That's 1998. Yeah, it was, that was when we were in high school. That was when I was yeah, like, finishing I, high school. That's I thought that was an urban legend. That ride just had come out around that time. Yeah. Okay, this guy climbed over the chain link him. fence. Yeah, he went in the unrestricted area. Oh. The restricted area. Oh, the so restricted an area, area where it takes you really close to the ground where nobody should be at in the right. first. Ah. Uh, yeah. And then he got kicked in the head. Yeah, he got kicked in the head, I believe. Yeah, and he died an hour later. Oh, so he didn't man. get decapitated. So he didn't get tap that just made it, just made it <laughs> I think that would have been instant. <laughs> That's the urban legend part. <laughs> yes. You're like, dude, you're like, <laughs> you know, video game. You're like, he kicked his head off, and then it went inside like, the basket. Yeah, I, I was watching a lot of Mortal Kombat. Oh uh, my, sorry. Yeah, guys. okay. Let's think about wow. that for a second. If you kick someone hard enough to kill them, their head's most likely to explode, not pop off their. <laughs> 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 Whoa, well, you had a you had a weak vertebrae like there. Grape, you know, just <laughs> how the hell did that pop off your? Oh, <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's, wow, that's, I didn't I can't believe I didn't know that. Yeah. That, I was yeah. going I was I had season passes around that time. So I was going all the time. Must Oh uh, yeah. Must have no, totally that, forgotten. No, I that. so I used to have a season pass when I was 15. So wait, take us back to our this Japan conversation. So I'm curious to like what what the acceleration how, Oh, and that's what it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And are they shutting it down because of that? They are now because it's just So what bones was it to uh, people Well, breaking? I mean there's six cases, but in this particular one cervical. Cervical. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so of course. Their neck, right? But uh, man, I, yeah, I used to when I was a kid, we had season passes, and we used to take the light rail to Great America uh, every day in the summer. Mm -hmm. And my cousin and I did uh, what was that one called? Tidal wave, which is essentially accelerates yeah, yeah. and does a loop and comes back. Yeah, yeah. we did that I think fifteen times in a row because we want to see how many times. <laughs> I always liked the was it Six Flags or not Six Flags, a Magic Mountain because they had like Same the place. craziest rides. They had crazier ones in Great America. Yeah, yeah they have faster ones in Cal. So that Six Flags, Magic Mountain, same difference. Has yeah. uh, the faster roller coasters than uh, Great America. Yeah. By else. the way, Adam, you know how we've been having this kind of ongoing debate about oh, God, robots? and uh, I'm future. winning that, by the way. Huh? Oh, I'm you know who was right about uh, Jake Paul? Oh, I know. Oh, he was, you were yeah, right about there first. immediately yeah. right yeah. out of He retired retirement. for 25 hours. You I, son of a bitch. I knew it, dude. That's yeah. a, he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant online marketer. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Look how much attention he's getting. Yeah, he's, and every he's, fight, he's just generating He follows more. all that stuff. He like follows how many uh, Google searches he gets and ranks compared to uh, like what's being searched. Like He ranks all the time as like a top Google search. Yeah, so I'm, I'm retiring. Boom, at the top. Right. I'm not retiring. Boom, at the top. Right. You know, throw, yeah. uh, you know I'm going to fight this me. guy it's now. So yeah, it's so obnoxious, dude. It's, uh, it's actually brilliant. I mean, of course it's smart, but it's, it's very, obnoxious. very smart. All right, so here we go. I got. A, I got. A, this was published or in Science Daily. Uh, the title of this article is "These Robots Can Move Your Couch." So. <laughs> yes, dude. Researchers, but can they do your dishes? Re oh, oh, we're, oh, we're getting there. Yeah. Researchers develop robots that can work independently but cooperatively. So they actually designed robots and put them in situations where, and they were successful. When now, asked to move objects in new, unfamiliar scenarios. Are they problem solving themselves or is yes. they pre-programmed? No, they're literally saying move that here to here. 
and they figure it out and then work together. Wow. It's or happening, work Adam. It's happening. Wow. Uh, yeah. We're getting a video of this. I, mean, I have yet to read about people going to the moon. I mean, this could fall on moon. your guys' conspiracy theories though, right here. What do you mean? What do you mean you haven't heard someone going to the moon? We've no, already been so the far, moon. we got like to the edge of the atmosphere. That's about as far as we've got commercial. We're about commercial flights. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we've been there before. You know what I'm saying? So right, right now, that's the same argument. So for you to say that they like someone designs a robot that can do a dish or that can pick up a couch is the same argument as we say. I like, know. We've wait, been to the moon. No, we should get like one of the commercially <laughs> would be the same thing at like commercial flights would be the same thing okay. saying like wait it's been can be sold at target i know you guys ever watch it. the dot race at like a baseball game you know you got like the white the blue and then oh, yeah, they're yeah. like fighting then like this is what's happening with like the robot and then getting to the middle yeah, i've never yeah. i've never been to a baseball game yeah, you don't know what i'm uh, talking about the, at all, I, know. I know way more people that would love a robot to move uh, their couch you than and your, you, and your, you and your zoo friends Stop. <laughs> Stop. I got a hell of zoo friends that tell me about this Stop all the it. time. Stop it. <laughs> zoo scientists. Hey, hey, speaking of stupid shit, what is that? Did you guys know? Okay, first of all, TikTok, dumb. I trained a lot of zoo. I know. I always talk crap yeah. about TikTok. Great social Don't media. Don't do that because then I get DMs like crazy. Every once you guys I'm sure we're going to have to get on there. We're on there. We're on there. You can find Mind Pump on TikTok. Yeah. Choki selects. She, uh, she uses me all the yeah, time. Yeah, Justin's done a couple of videos reasons. on there, so we're just a little more selective it's about that. Ju Justin, I apologize to my kids. It's because Justin's the hot one. By the way, let's zoom the oh. camera in real quick on him. Mm. Look at this outfit today. You look like you came out of the 1950s ready to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no, uh, yeah. So he's so, lightning. So TikTok banned the milk crate challenge uh, videos on the milk. Crate. Now, what is the milk crate challenge? So Explain they, this to me. They just stack, they stack as many these. milk crates up, right? At, at like a like a step ladder, and you have to be able to walk up it and walk down it. So it gets about how high? It was like ten. Well, in the no, I think the, the challenge is how high. How you can, high can you? Yeah, get I think how high. You so it's very unstable, and people fall. Yeah. And yes. so they're banning the challenge. Yeah, because people are probably dying wow, from falling dude. from so far. They're doing it on asfalt and stuff like that. It's wow. funny because I watched, uh, and again, this is where I end up like with my conspiracy uh, theory stuff I bring <laughs> to the show. Um, they, there was this like some some kind of like ritual uh, uh, that these Freemasons do, where they they have like some kind of step pyramid and then you get to like master level or something and so they're like oh you guys are actually performing some occult ritual don't even See, know it. oh i saw that and i was I just like it. what oh my <laughs> so this is how, so you want to talk about how china beats us this is how they beat us they put out stupid challenges and then they watch <laughs> all of our kids kill yeah, themselves. yeah everybody's just <laughs> with stupid shit now okay like tearing their acl interesting that they they banned this one did they ban when they did the tide pod challenge remember when that was like going viral yeah, they banned that did they, they did dig I think so. Did TikTok exist? I don't know if TikTok yeah, specifically did, did but did. I know. Yeah, yeah, that was like a big move was to ban, yeah. ban that from. Yeah. Happening. Now I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I'm not gonna eat a Tide Pod, but if you're a kid and you look at one, it looks like candy. It's <laughs> blue. It's shiny. Yeah, you, it's something you want to taste. Yeah, I don't. Think but then you learn. I don't think that's what motivated real, them to do real it quick. It looked like candy. Wow. All. So people are are walking up these crates and falling and then filming it. Yeah, man. I, am I not saw one where a guy like it was like a gender reveal one where this guy's like walking and trying to make his way up and then you know eat shit and then like blue dust flies in the air and everybody's like yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like that, everybody's getting creative with that's these. That's hilarious. Hey, so somebody DM me a clip. I, I brought this up a long time ago. Do you guys remember? There was like a, a tackle football league that was women only. It was like, yeah. it's like, it's got to be at least 10 years ago. And this maybe. one isn't the lingerie league. That must have been it. It was yeah. something like that. And what they, they wore pads, mm -hmm. yeah. but they also wore little booty shorts yeah, yeah, and yeah. all Bru that stuff. Brilliant marketing. Bro. Okay. Yeah. So, and these, and okay. So someone sent me a clip of Some it. Of these girls can ball out. Bro. Yeah. First of all, they're built. Well, these girls are built, dude. They look like like okay. they, they look like they really work out and they really train. So and then when they hit each other, they're playing for reals. Yeah. Was, so someone sent me a clip because they must have listened to old episode. I was like, oh my God, these girls were, Oh, did we talk about it a long time ago? A long time ago. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in college we actually coached like a powder puff. Yeah. It was was a big deal. But like, dude, to see some of these girls like have never done like full contact. Like they played soccer or like, but not like like deliberate deliberately went to like <laughs> tackle and smash their body into it was crazy to watch it got so aggressive it was awesome yeah, well but, isn't that where this all evolved from was from powder puff i mean that's been a tradition in high schools for look, a really long look time down the left i mean those chicks are built and and they would blast each other by the way yeah. this is this is why you know we get a lot of heat as men 
Uh, we named it Powder Puff. Like that's a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey well, girls, we made a leak for you. It's I know. well, no, I don't. It's called that, Unicorn Sprinkle. This, this <laughs> league isn't called that, but no. Powder Puff game that that Justin's alluding to right now is. Uh, this is like um, yeah, it was more around. like flag football. I remember yeah, the that. juniors and the like, senior girls would play each other during homecoming tackle. week. So that was like the I know, yeah, but the, the name tradition. is funny. And then even this with the tackle football, like like they, they put them in booty shorts, you know? yeah. And it's like yeah, it's that's so funny. To lingerie me. football, I think. Right, that's what that's yeah, called. Yeah, I and it's know. and I, I mean I know why is how they get viewers. Uh, you know, so that's why I always think it's so interesting when we we still have so many people that go back and listen from the very beginning. Like that's crazy. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. We're not that good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back then. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't that great. The shows changed just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, so how's how's the training going, Adam? Are you? I'm back. I know you're okay. Yeah. Do you feel like your your symptoms are almost all gone? Nope. What? I still have got the. I can't smoke, man. I keep like. Damn it! I know. That's, Poor guy. I know. That's, <laughs> keep waiting for it. To, I know, and I keep like give you a green oh, light. I'm testing it. Like I feel really good, so I'll go over and I like. I'm smart enough now to not go like full on. By the way, we're a fitness podcast. He's talking about weed, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> I'm not smoking cigarettes. Big uh, difference. Yeah, weed's yeah. Okay. And I, you know, I know. Everyone, well, eat the edible, I, and I got to order some edibles. I haven't ordered edibles uh, in a long time. But I tell you, here's the thing, too, and what I missed. Uh, what I'm missing the most about cannabis, and I, I actually, I'm glad you brought this up because I actually wanted to sh tell you guys and, and share this. I didn't necessarily need to do it on air, but um, man, when I, when you have it for a long time. And then you have just a little bit, boy. Uh, the the creative juices get. Oh, it's flowing. euphoric. I I'll have to show you guys my my notes in my iPhone. I mean, that doesn't I, make sense. Though. I mean, I must have. Yeah. Oh, because sometimes well, the notes are like. Well, no, you're right. Like a lot of you gotta throw away. So literally, I mean, top ramen flavored cereal. It's fucking. Brilliant. I mean, every Ooh. aspect of our business, right? So every revenue Shrimp stream, flavor. everything going on, which is a, a lot of things. <laughs> Solar powered shoes. A lot of things yeah. going on, and yes, truth be told maybe five of the seven ideas are bad, mm -hmm. but then there's two that are like gold and like that I have to implement and get going and work on. But I mean, I, it really does. Uh, and I noticed it because I haven't for so long, like, like anything else, it, it loses its effect. If it, if you consistently do it every night, I don't get that same crazy yeah, your tolerance get built. Yeah. That yeah. crazy, cra even your, your tolerance get built, you get adapted to it. I don't know what it is also that's happening, but by taking that break and then having just a little bit again like that, it just my brain was on fire. I couldn't I couldn't go. This to sleep. is how you hack psychoactive substances. And this includes caffeine. Okay. Like go off caffeine for a week, yeah. take a little bit, and caffeine is it's confidence magic. It's like uh, yeah. oh my god. No, that was okay. That was the point of this. I, I know I didn't explain that very well. Was to Caffeine's highlight like, that because I talk a lot. Maximize about the benefit, minimize by, the because even if okay, COVID forced this for me. Yeah. But recently, just before that, I took a, I took a little over a month off, and I like to do that. And I'm reminded of why it's so beneficial. Other than proving that you're a master of your own domain and you're not going to get addicted to something and that you have control, but also the effects that you get. When you reintroduce it, and totally. the caffeine's the other one. So, so now you're working out again. Yeah, and and like what? What is this? Three, four workouts in. Three workouts in right yeah, now. Yeah, and how's it feel? Uh, is I, it hard to gauge the intensity? Yeah, dude, I was so blown away. So I did, um, I did single leg deadlifts with twenty pound dumbbells. So which, you're like, I'm going easy. Yeah, which is like nothing. And I, I, I did do some body weight squats to to warm up. I warmed up, did body weight squats, did a little bit of mobility work, and then I did single leg deadlifts with 20 pound dumbbells uh, for three or four sets. I can't remember. <laughs> my, I'm so lit up today, dude. I cannot believe. Isn't that weird? It is weird. I know. I mean, here, here's a lesson. Here's the, here's the mistake I made. Uh, one, I, not only was I off for three or four weeks, but I also have been consistently barbell training for a really long time and doing something that is a unilateral stability type of exercise. It would have, been, it would have made you sore anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would have made me sore anyways, but being deconditioned on top of that. So I probably could have just done my body weight and done even a set less and got just as good of results from that. I didn't even need to do, I didn't wow. even need to load it and do as many sets as I did because one, it was a new stimulus that I hadn't been doing in a really long time. And then in addition to that, taking a break off of all training for almost a month uh yeah still overreached yeah my hams and debt and glutes are, are hammered too but i did something different i didn't do <laughs> yeah you're yeah, was doing little, like pounds, your volume's right? a little bit <laughs> different than my volume talk right about now. that on the, no yeah. it's uh it really makes a huge difference when i take time off even though i go easier and i think i'm doing oh this is gonna feel okay i always overdo it it's such a crazy mental game isn't it it's oh like, yeah it's like literally you can, and you know what's funny with the muscle memory, you just gotta like send a tiny signal. That's and then it. it. Starts to kick. I can already tell a difference in the way you look. 
Just uh, from three workouts. I, what I'm really good about too is that, you know, again, I, we were talking about this earlier that I am on or off the wagon type of person. Well, as soon as I'm back to training too, like I always tighten the diet up better. Like yeah, even though they I go wasn't, hand in hand, huh? yeah, yeah, even though I wasn't really bad, um, you know, I allowed, like we had some, Katrina had, someone had brought some homemade cookies that I had in there and uh, we had, we ate out once or twice more than we normally would have. So instantly, as soon as I get back to my training, like just because it, I, and I, I used to stress this to clients all the time. It's like you, you can't out train a diet. If you eat like shit and you think that going to the gym and training really hard is going to get you to your goal and you're just not going to worry about what you eat, like it's just not going to happen. Dude, good luck. Yeah. And yeah. when you dial them both in right away, you can really make moves fast. It's the inconsistency in one or the other. If you're half-assing the diet, but maybe you're training really good or you're on the diet, but yeah. then you're half-assing your training. The combination of being dial on your training, dial on your diet, and you can move the needle pretty quick. Now, Justin, are you, you, full ass. Are, you are you staying consistent even though you're doing hella moving by yourself, by the way? I would like to I would like to throw that out real quick. Yeah. You decided to move your house by yourself. I did just move my house and my gym and everything included with that. So. so are you not working out on those days? That's a lot of work. Well... The first day I did like an idiot and, uh, you know, I paid for it going into it. But then, so I, I, I made a point the, the next few days, it was three days in a row. Uh, those other two days where I was just like, just totally taxed and spent. So, um, I didn't work out, uh, was it Monday, but then Tuesday I worked out and I've, I've been definitely monitoring my intensity. So I've brought my intensity way down. I'm just gradually kind of bringing it back up again. But yeah, dude, I was I was so taxed and like over uh, worked, and I, I wasn't sleeping well and stuff, and so like I totally overdid it mm. by just trying to take it all on myself uh, instead of hiring it out. You know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you gotta you gotta balance that out because that's uh, hard labor. Oh, it's always it's always harder than you remember. And that's the thing. It's like I I kind of remembered, but I thought I didn't really have that much stuff because I saw the boxes. I'm like, ah, this is no big deal. Just put boxes uh, away. Well, you get why we are constantly on the show preaching about uh, overreaching and overdoing mm -hmm. it and doing too much because here we are. 20 plus years experience, all of us have experience wise and old yeah and, and we still, still fall for that shit still do it you know totally. so you know like, that i'll be fine i mean you guys yeah. do this i'll be fine right well yeah. so you know that as as experienced as we are and and constantly talking about that you know that the average person they still do that you get you know because you're motivated you're you're motivated you're hyped up and you mm -hmm. and you want to and you're thinking you know, ah do more do another set it's like I constantly am having the, the opposite conversation when i know that it's the first time back in the gym in a while it's like Okay, I, I need to get in here and do this. And honestly, uh, what I try and tell myself is, okay, I need to be in here for about 45 minutes to an hour just so I can get back to like committing to the time. But the you gym. can do mobility. But I need stretch. to be breaking it up with some mobility and stretching yeah. in between and kind of a breath work mm -hmm. or isometric stuff. Like, yeah, I, I can't be doing like a full routine for that entire mm -hmm. hour or else I'll have overreached on every muscle yeah, group. Totally. All right. Um, so I, I wanted to put this out there because, uh, you know, we always have a lot of integrity with our audience, but also because I think this is important to uh, some of the people that uh, we care about in our lives. And I saved it for the end of the, of the intro because, uh, you know, we do a show and we really want to help people with health and fitness. And that means when something hard happens in our life, you put that aside so that you can, you know, you know, we feel responsible for the people watching the show, but I also feel responsible to the people in my life that I care about. And uh, somebody very close to us uh, mm -hmm. recently passed away, and I'd like to give a, a very, very special shout out to Larry Evans, and you know, a good friend of mine. He's actually one of the people, probably one of the reasons why Mind Pump even exists. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think Adam and I would have met. Had it not that been was the connection that kind of started, he's, that so was the connection. If, if you've listened to the podcast long enough, one, you've heard us drop that name more than once. Uh, Very two, special person to us. Two, you've heard uh, Sal and I talk about. Uh, we have a you know select few friends that we share that uh, we didn't know we shared originally, right? Like before we had ever met, uh, we had these friends that would always talk, and they're close friends, really close friends of both of ours. But yet Sal and I had never crossed paths, and they would always tell us like, "Oh, you." You got to meet Sal. You got to meet Sal. You guys, you guys got to do something together. It was crazy because uh, Larry is one of these guys. He was somebody who Sal hired 
uh, years and years ago. And then I had the pleasure of working with him as a partner um, at one of the gyms. And we worked together for years and then became very good friends after that, remained in contact forever. And he would always tell me, oh, you got you to meet this Sal guy. You got to get together. So He's, He was... Um uh, one of the, I, I, I hired him and, you know, he would say I mentored him. I learned as much from him as he maybe says he learned from me. He was one of the most, uh, gifted and talented individuals I've ever met. Officially the best, bro. He was the an incredible communicator naturally. I mean, this guy walked into my gym and he comes in in a basketball Jersey, basketball shorts. And he's like, Hey, you know, I, you know I'm looking, I'm looking for a job. And I felt his energy immediately and he's so likable and I said come back tomorrow and let's let's talk we'll do the interview I hired him on the spot and I'd never met anybody who could make anybody like them so easily and effortlessly like old people young people didn't matter where you came from didn't matter anything he if you met him and you walked in and he was the guy giving you a tour of the gym you were going to sign up and you were going to do whatever he said cuz you love the guy and this is just the energy that he, that he brought to everybody around him. He touched so many people because, he's, again, this talent that he had, just an a incredible person. And, you know, you end up losing touch over the years because we didn't work together anymore, but always in each other's minds and hearts and so much respect for the guy and, you know, for I, I feel so much for his family. It's really hard to even talk about this, you know, on the, on the podcast. I don't but. know if I've ever shared this story with you um but memory pops up of my first experience with larry um he was a record holder so he broke like almost every sales record in the company like he was unbelievably talented what sal's talking about and uh i i knew of him for a couple of years before we even met and so in 24 hour fitness back then it was very competitive right so you had a what they called a ppr and this is also, we've talked about how I knew of Sal by his name before I met him as a person because he'd always be ranked in the top. And so those of us that were always in the top were always watching each other. Yeah, so you knew each other because yeah. of that. Yeah, so you, you, even if you didn't know each other in person, you knew of that person because they were consistently at the top and you were competing with them. And Larry was uh, probably dominated for the longest th than anybody else I know in the company. And uh, when, you, when you win that often and people don't know you, rumors start happening. Oh, he cheats. What's he doing different? It's like, well, like people would say that he was cooking the books and all. And, and then I get this call that I'm being promoted to the Hillsdale location and Larry was being transferred over there to be the GM. And they, at the, their idea at this time was that was one of the super gyms. Larry was the top performing GM in the Northern California. I was the top performing fitness manager and never had they tried to pair the, the two up like that before. And they wanted to see what we could do out of there. And, uh, and I, I remember all of my buddies that were working for the company were like, they were so excited because then I get to go find out is this guy. And they were all already, everybody was talking to me yeah. about find out is he, you know, is he cheating or what's he doing? Is he kinking deals? Like, and, and I remember getting the phone calls for the first week as I'm, I'm working with Larry and it, just like Sal saying, like he's, his energy was so contagious. He was such a happy go lucky person. I didn't know a single person that would meet him and not just instantly fall in love. And he had that ability to transfer that to a guest who had just walked in the gym and had never, never met him before. And you would watch him do his thing. And the guy would just do unbelievable. It was the first person ever in my career that ever bumped one of my deals. So I'd never experienced that before where somebody else took a deal of mine and, and sold something. And in sales, that's a big deal, right? If uh, you, you find somebody wrote time, I was known for that. I know you were known for that. I know that you would probably have your counselor turn a deal over to you. And then after they saw you, boom, they would spend double, triple that. Well, I was known as that guy. So nobody did that to me. Nobody could come over the top of my presentation and do that. Larry, that was like one of my first introductions to him was him doing that to me. And like instantly I was blown away and impressed. And I remember calling everybody be like, no, he's just, he's special, man. He's yeah. a special guy. Special guy, man. You'll, you'll be missed, bro. Love you, man. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. So masszymes is spelled M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. This is a company we just started working with that makes some of the best digestive enzymes you can buy anywhere. Now, why would you want to supplement with digestive enzymes? It helps you utilize the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates more effectively, helps you with digestion. So if you find that you get a little bit of bloating or constipation or gas from changing your diet, enzymes can definitely help. 
In fact, this is a product or these products I have been implementing now regularly. And I, somebody who suffers from gut issues, has noticed a pretty tremendous benefit. Now I can eat more food, fuel my body, and not feel bad like I used to before. So head over to masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10. So that's mind pump one zero for a discount. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Nick from New York. Nick, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Um, I started my fitness journey in 2017 around like 275 pounds. I'm 190 now, and I got into OCR training and Spartan races a lot. Um, since COVID started, I've been doing the same regimen with a very heavy hit focus, uh, doing like a lot of burpees and rows and a lot of intense cardio with two days where I would do heavy lifting with a uh, leg day and a back and chest day. And I also did intermittent fasting with a one hour eating window along with keto. And my, I noticed that my weight would fluctuate a lot when I deviated from that. Um, and I had listened to uh, your podcast with the seven day maps plan, and I'm going to be trying that out. My question is, am I shooting myself in the foot by working so heavy alongside intermittent fasting and keto while also training for Spartans? I feel like maybe I'm going in the wrong direction with this yeah, regiment, yes. especially since I want to perform well at the Spartans, but also get the aesthetic that I want. Yeah. So, um, yes, your intuition is correct. You are, uh, and I, when I say shooting yourself in the foot, I don't mean you're screwed. I mean, you've just, you, you know, you've taken everything but the kitchen sink or maybe even the kitchen sink and thrown it at yourself. And so now you're in a position where sustainability is going to become an issue. And this, Nick, is the main reason why people eventually fall off is they, they do so many things to accomplish a particular goal and it's just unsustainable either because it's too much to dedicate yourself to or because the person's body, mind, uh, you know, or mind burns out. So here's what I suggest you do. Now, I know you like the OCR race. You can still do mm -hmm. that, train specifically for the OCR race if, if that's what you want to do and do nothing else. Or if you want to start going down the path of sustainability, I'm going to recommend you start to eliminate the high-intensity hit type training, focus on three full-body workouts a day, like a MAPS anabolic type of routine, slowly increase your calories, and allow your metabolism to start to recover because that's a much more sustainable approach. Will you gain some weight doing it? Maybe a little bit, but uh, here, my prediction is if you don't move in this direction, um, you're going to, you're going to have a huge rebound sometime in the future. You have to, you have to go this way. Nick, would you have any idea uh, where your calories are? I, uh, when I'm doing, when I was doing the uh, hit regimen, I was at like 1900 calories. Yeah. Um, and since I've been listening to you guys, I've heard time and again, you know, bump up the calories, bump up the calories. So I've been slowly bumping them up. Um, I went, I just did like 1900 to 2400. Okay. And okay. then what did, did you notice anything? How do you feel? What's, what's going on since then? <laughs> Um, I noticed that I did gain a little weight, but it's mostly muscle. Like I gained four pounds in the past three weeks, but yeah. like three of those pounds are muscle. That's excellent. That you're okay. So you know, the, the a couple things that are really good news. One, uh, for you to go as far as you've gone already, uh, it it just highlights your discipline and consistency, which is. Oh, as a trainer, you're you're always excited when you have somebody who can stick to something. And you've been really kicking ass for a long time. The hard the hardest part is going to be the mental challenge here uh, is to get you to kind of calm down with all the crazy movement. And honestly, I know Sal said that you could uh, do the OCR program and keep doing the Spartan race training stuff like that. Personally, if you were my client, I would I would want you not to. So if you fought me on it, then, you know, at the end of the day, like uh, you're hiring me. And so I've got to kind of bend a Make little the bit. the best of it. Yeah. But if I had full control of your plan, 
Um, it would be, let's actually just, and I would either do anabolic or even like power lift. Like I would want your mindset around, let's build muscle. Now you've done so mm-hmm. well for so long of cutting, cutting and, and leaning out and losing weight, losing weight. Let's shift our focus for a couple months on building some muscle and getting strong as hell in the gym. And that, and I wouldn't worry about the scale. I wouldn't get caught up on whether you go up or down a few pounds. Honestly, as long as I actually don't want you to go down, I'd want you to actually maintain your weight, maybe even possibly go up a few pounds like you have currently. And the main goal would be how high can we get these calories without you putting on any body fat or ex- mm-hmm. excess body fat, I should say, and how strong can we get in the gym? And that is our main goal. Walking is fine. So if you've already trained yourself to be running every day and doing lots of stuff to ask a client like that to go from seven days a week of crazy movement down to three days of strength training. That's it. But uh, what I would say is, listen, uh, on your off foundational days, I guess anabolic's a three-day program, trigger sessions and walking. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And- <clears throat> I think, um, yeah, I definitely would echo what, what Adam's kind of suggesting with that. But I mean, you, you did all the work to get to where you are now in, in, in losing the weight and, uh, you know, in your busy body and you want to keep active and, and really like the the psychological challenge for you right now is to find what out there is sustainable for your lifestyle. So what activities, what things can you promote that you can continue from here on out, uh, you know, with a healthier body? And that's, that's always a challenge when, because uh, we don't want to perpetually go through this gain weight, lose weight, you know, kind of trap that, that a lot of times we get into with this kind of intensity that it took to get to there. So uh, you know, to, to be able to find if OCR is something that's really enjoyable and it's like a continual thing you want to kind of keep challenging yourself with, great. But uh, it has to be something like that. It has to be something that you really enjoy, uh, you know, that will be able to kind of maintain uh, all this momentum that uh, you have right now. Yeah, Nick, I'm going to make some guesses, okay? You tell me if I'm if I'm wrong or right, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that the reason why you started OCR and the reason why you went keto and the reason why you started intermittent fasting was all to help you lose weight. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. So now here's some just honest, tough love, but I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to help you uh, convert this a little bit. Okay. Though that's probably the worst reason to do any of those three things. Okay. Uh, OCR motivating yourself by doing events is a almost guaranteed way to, uh, not have sustainable weight loss. At some point you're chasing this competition and at some point it's going to stop working for you either because your body rejects it or because you burn out mentally. The same thing is true with keto and intermittent fasting. Now to get to where you started, which was 275, You probably had some bad relationship with food stuff going on, which most of us do, right? So that's what led to the 275. And what you did is you traded a bad relationship with food that led to 275 to another bad relationship with food that led to 180 pounds, 190 pounds. So what I want you to really focus on is don't be afraid of the 10, 15 pound weight gain that may happen. I want you to forget about that and think about sustainability. That's the thing that is going to threaten your long-term success. It's not the, oh, no, I gained 10 pounds because I stopped doing all these hit workouts and I'm you know, doing strength training. Don't worry about that. Think sustainability. You ha- you know, How old are you, Nick, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 36 years old. Yeah, dude. You, do you want to keep this body fat off? for the rest of your life, right? Do you want to have- Oh, yeah, of course. Right, and you want to have it, in, in, you, maybe you have a family now, if you don't, maybe have one in the future, or, you know, friends and other things in life that are very important. And it's you want to create, your fitness needs to not just support your life, but improve your quality of life. Now, of course, part of that is your improved health. But the other part of it is, you know, it's very hard to do when you're stressed- you're stressed out about diet and I can only eat one hour window and I can't have any carbs and I got to do this OCR race, you know, four years, five years, 10 years, that becomes a stressful situation. So remember that. And I want you to do the right thing, which means you're going to have to go against some of your fears. And, And most of your fears are probably centered around going back to where you were before. Um, and, and, and that fear is actually going to get you to where you were before. So, Check yourself there. Take our advice. And I would say for the next three months, do MAPS Anabolic. 
do the walking on the off days, eliminate the other stuff. Don't do the OCR race unless it's super important to you, in which case it's a fine. Do this one last one. And don't weigh yourself for the next three months. Don't even weigh yourself. Just look at strength. Look at your health. How do I feel? Am I enjoying things? Do I feel just whatever? And then as far as diet's concerned, I say this. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't take the pendulum and swing it all the way in the other direction because that's a recipe for disaster. I would say include a little bit of carbs post-workout. As far as intermittent fasting is concerned, I would have a little bit of food. Uh, normally when you fast, you're not going in the opposite direction, but slowly move yourself to a more normal, balanced way of living so that you move towards sustainability. I'm going to be even more specific with this and tell you what what a massive win for us would look like is if I got you to cut out a lot of the stuff that you're doing, follow MAPS Anabolic to a T, which means you're doing the three foundational days. It means you're doing the trigger sessions. You're allowed to walk. If you want to go out and walk, I'm totally good with that. You're, you consistently start with about 2,400 calories. You've already proven that you can kind of eat there and your body's responded well. It's added three pounds of muscle and only one of fat. That's an incredible ratio. Mm. So get to consistently eating 2,400 calories while following that program. And then our next goal for the next two months or so is, can I get from 2,400 to about 2,800 and get stronger in the gym? If you came back to me, and let's say we didn't weigh at all, right? I, I tell you, just like Sal said, throw the fucking scale away. I don't care about that. Just talk to me about you getting stronger. Talk Talk to me about you being able to eat and your energy levels. And then in two months, we hop on the scale. And I, as long as you're not up probably over 15 pounds, you're up anywhere between 7 to 12 pound range, and you're eating 2,800 calories, you and I are high-fiving, and I'm telling you how much you're kicking ass. Because that would be the most successful two to three months from now is to be able to do that. For you to be able to say you're eating 2,800 calories, doing way less cardio, strength training, and stronger, you you have completely started to change the trajectory of your, your fitness journey for sure, and you're getting stronger and building more muscle and for sure will have a faster metabolism. Yeah. Nick, do you have MAPS Anabolic? I actually do. I bought the uh, anabolic and aesthetic uh, package like a couple days ago. All right. Well, uh, I, I want to give you something for free. So I'm going to I'm going to let you in in the private forum because I'd like you. I would love if you could give us, uh, you know, updates every other week or so and post it in yes. the private forum and then just tag us. OK. Absolutely. All right, my friend. Thanks for calling. Thank you guys so much. No problem. Look forward to seeing you in the forum, man. That's that's a what a challenge, right? Because you get you know you're you're at a particular weight, you know, in his case two two seventy five, mm -hmm. and then he probably had a moment where he's like, "That's it, I'm I gotta I gotta get rid of this, I gotta change my life," mm -hmm. and so you do what you do when you feel that way, which is everything, everything at once. Yes, yeah. and and it definitely got him to lose weight, uh, but that mental state that he's riding right now doesn't last forever. So I'm so glad he called in because now we can move him in the right direction. Well, I'm so glad yeah. that we answer a question like this too because it's something that we we talk about on the show all the time. Like this, yep. he's actually so normal. You know, sub in whatever weight, sex, age, that changes, of course. But as far as like somebody who has put on a lot of weight over the last years or decades and is trying to lose, lose weight, this is the approach. It's exactly what happens. And I guarantee he didn't start here with all that stuff. It's probably started with right away cutting calories like yeah. crazy, doing cardio, yep. yeah. and then saw the first initial 10, 20 pounds go down. And then, okay, let's what add. What else can I do? Yeah, Keep let's throttling. add OCR and let's add HIT and let's do intermittent. And I'm on fire. Right. And, yeah. and now what's cool about when I get a client like this is, and what I was telling him is that he's got the discipline, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've done that for the last year or so, whatever, how long did you say he took him to get to this point? Yeah, it was uh, 2017. I think he's started but uh if i'm not mistaken i'm trying to look up there it was mostly in the last yeah year yeah or so, so yeah. i mean this guy's been consistently getting after it so if i can just get him to shift his focus because mm -hmm. that's the the first hardest thing is to get a client to be consistent with whatever yeah. it is that we're trying to do so he's already proven that he can be consistent that'll just be the mental hurdle that's you know it. not getting caught up if the scale goes up five to 15 pounds and just get stronger in the gym our next caller is Roxy from North Dakota. What's up, Roxy? How can we help you? Hi. I just had a question about hip dips. Okay. Um, I recently started getting back into fitness in May, and as I started to lean out, I noticed some pretty big indents in the sides of my glutes. And when I started looking up um, 
like how to get rid of them. Uh, a lot of the research said that they were either genetic or bone structure or not really possible to get rid of. So I was just wondering if there were any exercises I could do to reduce the appearance of them or if they are genetic or what I can do. Okay. Butt dimples. That's what I call them. Yeah. Sal's got cute ones. I got a really nice one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Roxy, uh, great. I love this question uh, because it's going to allow us to kind of highlight a few things. Uh, first off, I see in the question that you sent us that you're doing all the best butt building exercises. You're doing hip thrust, squats, deadlifts. Um, so you're doing the right kind of butt building exercises. Um, you started working out in May, so it hasn't been that long that you've been super consistent. Yeah. Do you know what your body fat percentage is sitting at? Could you, or can you give us like a rough estimate, do you think? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> okay. You look you look pretty lean from your from the video. I would I would say without looking at the rest of you, you're probably in a pretty lean athletic category, especially if you could see. So when you're talking about hip dip for people watching this. Literally, it's the sides. It's under the the like the hip bone, and it's kind of where, when, as you get leaner, you'll see it kind of come in a little bit. Um, now, I, I I think you might be a little uh, too critical of yourself if I'm if I'm being quite honest with you. Um, that definitely is an area. That, I mean, are there muscles you could develop there? Uh, kinda. Is it going to change it much? Not really. You're doing the best exercise. I'd say be a little bit patient. You can gain a little body fat, and sometimes that'll fill in. But you, you also want to be careful that you don't analyze yourself in the mirror and start to pick yourself apart and, and notice like little things that, you know, maybe to other people don't look like a problem at all. You might look very fit and healthy, but to you, if, if you kind of go down this path, it'll be almost impossible to get out of. Well, I, I, have, a, I have a couple. I mean, there's some things for sure. You, I saw that you are doing a lot of exercise, but I, one, I would ask, um, what does your rep ranges look like? How long have you been training in that in that rep range? And then also, are you tracking calories? And have you gone on a bulk in, in any time in the last you know three months since we've been trying to do this? Okay, yeah, no, I haven't uh, gone on a bulk. I don't really track my calories. Um, and rep range, I usually do about eight to ten, um, and three or yeah, eight to ten, three times. Okay, and are you pretty consistent with that? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I would love to see you lift in the five rep range, and I would love to put you on a bulk because you got to remember you're okay. trying to – So, and and the, the side butt uh, is kind of what we're alluding to to get that kind of heart-shaped ass, right? So that gives you that look on the side. And you're doing some of the best exercises, but if you're always in that rep range and you're in a calorie maintenance or a calorie deficit a lot of the time, you're not going to build. You're just not, you're going to, you're going to continue to kind of burn and stay tight and stay firm and stay in the shape that you currently are. But if we want to build some muscle, build some shape, well, then we need a calorie surplus. And if you've also been training in that same eight to 12 rep range for a really long time, your body's probably pretty adapted to that. So dropping you down to the five rep range and loading, loading the bar more and then bumping your calories and then focusing on the exercise you're doing. I think you're doing great exercises, but I think it's important that you're phasing your rep ranges. And are you following any of our maps programs? I am not. Okay. So I, I mean, we have a, we have a, a butt builder bundle, so I would love to hook you up with that and have you follow that to a T because in the program, we actually phase you in and out of rep ranges. And the first phase is the low rep range that I'd want to transition you into right now. So I would transition you into that. I would ask you to bump your calories a little bit and then see what happens mm. from there. Now, now, Roxy, if if I were to talk to somebody that knows you very well and that cares about you, and if I, if I asked them, do you think Roxy's a little bit too critical of her appearance? What would they? How would they answer me? For sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. I hear that a lot from my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. So, and now, now sometimes we need to listen to the people that care about us the most, especially when it comes to how we judge ourselves. And especially when it comes to appearance, especially when you're somebody that's into fitness, because look, I've experienced this. You, you literally do not see accurately uh, with your own eyes when you judge yourself, at least not the way you look at other people. I'm sure you look at other people and you say, well, that person looks great or whatever. Um, and then you look in the mirror and you start to really hyper criticize how you look. Don't go down this path. There's no way out. And you'll never get to the point where you look perfect if this is mm. the, the mental state 
that you're in. Adam has great advice. In fact, if you do what he's saying, focus on the strength. Don't focus on the mirror. That'll right. guide you in the right direction for sure. Have you ever worked out just focusing on getting stronger and watching you know, the, the amount of weight that you can lift uh, increase? Has that ever been a focus of yours? Has it always been aesthetic? Uh, no, I like seeing the numbers go up on the bar and everything okay, like that good. too. I just, yeah, recently lost the weight. So it's kind of been hard to not focus on the mirror so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Time to bulk. Time yeah, to bulk. We'll definitely focus on that. You're, and just, you know, allow yourself, you know, that kind of freedom, uh, you know, to just go in there and just, uh, you know, really just keep it just specifically on how much weight uh, you're moving around and how much stronger you're going to get. You're, you're doing great exercises. I mean, you're on you obviously have done your homework and research on the movements that are going to give you give you this look that you're chasing. But it's just I mean, if you don't give the the body the the right amount of calories to to grow and build a butt, the butt's a, a muscle just like your biceps is or shoulders. It's mm -hmm. no different if a guy called me up and said, Adam, I have small shoulders, I want bigger shoulders. I assess his diet, and his diet is at maintenance or in a deficit. The the easiest thing I'd tell him is let's just increase your calories. But the challenge, especially for my female clients, is when I tell them this. They also want to stay as lean as they possibly are. And you just got to be okay with, hey, we're going to increase your calories. So we're going to put a few pounds on. Just trust the process. Mm -hmm. We can always reverse and go lean out again. But if the goal is to build a fuller, rounder butt. You got to feed then, your body. That's right. We got we to feed, the, feed it the calories it needs to build that muscle. And then if we you know, inevitably put a couple pounds of body fat on along the way, which is inevitable and not a big deal, and we reverse and go the other way, we're, we're going to lean out. Not to mention... In this process, you're going to speed your metabolism up. Yeah, and, and the strength gains are objective, right? Your uh, your visual criticisms of how you look can be not objective, right? So that's why it's so it's such a great place to be when you're seeing just strength go up, and that's what you're focused on because you either get stronger or you don't. And I will say this: if you get stronger and you do it in a healthy way, uh, the what you what what shows in the mirror is going to change for the better, for sure. That'll happen automatically. Okay. All right, Roxy. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Man, that's a tough one. You know what? I, I feel what like she was I... a little disappointed in our answer. Was she a little dis <laughs> Can you tell, Doug? Did she have like a disappointed look on the answer? Um. Yeah. I, maybe I think she wanted uh, a secret, secret, secret exercise. Yeah, like yeah. You had some kind of. <laughs> you weren't giving out the magical sauce, exercise. I mean, there's, we could. Go, I mean, I could add some things. Like I, I would love. So my my ass is on fire today. The whole thing because I did. I hadn't done a single leg dumbbell deadlifts in so long, and just. You hit all the the stabilizer yeah, muscles around the hip, which are you're trying. She's trying to develop. So there's some exercises that we can include, but I I think she's already she. And we, I guess we should tell the audience because the audience didn't hear. I mean, she's doing sumo deadlifts. She's doing barbell hip thrust. She's squatting. You know, so she's doing a lot of good movements. You know, lunging, Bulgarian split squats. These are all movements that are going to build and develop the butt. But this is a, this is an area that I, a lot of my female clients would struggle with, and that is. They want to build their butt and they also want to lean out. And those mm -hmm. are conflicting goals. Yeah, to lose yeah. body fat is catabolic and to build a butt is anabolic. So yeah. one of them needs a surplus of calories. And so you just got to, if you really care about building that butt more, you got to be okay with, hey, we're going to try and put some weight on right now. That's inevitably what's well, going on. Well, and then this is kind of like, I don't know, I guess it highlights a little bit of the trap of, of Instagram and, totally, you true. know, really just like com the comparison trap. It's the thief of joy, right? So you're always comparing yourself to what you see and you're not happy with what you have. And so like, I think it's important that, you know, Sal was kind of stressing that to her because, you know, and, and to be able to really, you know, get to the place you want, a lot of times you have to remove yourself from totally. it. Totally. No, there's, that's great, great balance to, for us to do. Cause I mean, there's two sides of this hundred percent Sal is right. And that you got to be careful because that's the, the, the never ending goal. You'll always just right. like the guy who is, or girl who's chasing a, a certain amount of wealth and they realize that they yeah. just keep stretch. They just keep, the, and you see this in bodybuilding a lot too. Yeah, I'm not I'm, big enough. Not yeah. big enough. Not big enough. You know, one of my favorite things about training clients for as long as I did, I would have clients that would be with me for ten years, fifteen years. And one thing I used to love doing is I would we would take pictures sometimes, right? So I'd have these old pictures from twelve years ago, and I would love to do this because I get clients. This is something we all struggle with, and my client would say something like, you know, oh, you know, oh man, I don't look good. I don't like the way, whatever. And I'd say, man, I remember when you used to say that to me 12 years ago. Yeah, and I'd when, pull out a picture. When you look like this. And they'd look at it and go, wow, I really thought I looked terrible. I looked great. And it's like you could be objective because it was so long ago. 
So you get caught in this trap and fitness does not improve your life. It becomes uh, a detriment to you. So you sometimes you have to remove yourself. One of the best ways to do that is just focus on getting stronger. Now, that being said, you know, because that's the, there is also some things that could potentially be the main reason why she's not building her butt. Low calorie, mm -hmm. same rep range. Who, if she's been doing that for months yeah. or years, yeah, same, yeah. And she and these same exercises, same rep range, and and living in a calorie maintenance or deficit. I mean, you simply give her a few more calories, change up a couple exercises for the glutes, drop her rep range, yeah, drop and her she rep absolutely range, change the tempo. Yeah, you know, she'll the absolutely focus. see some of that some of that totally. butt grow. Our next caller is John from California. Hey, what's up, John? How can we help you? Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Um, I work in the music industry. I'm an audio engineer. Uh, I'm basically the guy who records and mixes songs so they're ready for the radio. And I love my job, uh, but I travel a lot. I'm on the road more than half of the year. And for the most part, while I'm in one city or another for a month or two at a time, I can relatively manage my fitness. The problem is come tomorrow, I'm leaving for tour. And as you might know, I'll be in one city and the next practically every night. And therein lies the problem. I find it hard to maintain my working out with the limited availability for space like green rooms and whatnot, just trying to maintain a healthy eating uh, habit is really hard. And I find by the second or third week of every tour without fail, all of my attempts crumble. Um, and the stress of it all, the, the increased work demand obviously puts pressures on me. And I guess my question is in, in the midst of all of that craziness, little control over my schedule, how would you suggest somebody like me stay fit, stay sane, um, and also try and lose some pounds. Oh, yeah. G great question, and I think I have uh, the best answer for you. So so I, I want you to look at your exercise routine and don't look, it as a, look, don't look at it as a way to lose weight. Don't look at it as a way to you know build muscle. And I know it does all that, but rather I want you to look at exercise as a way to improve your mental health, reduce your stress, and improve your quality of life. It is excellent for those things. In fact, studies show exercise, consistent exercise to be as good or superior to pharmaceutical drugs for the treatment of anxiety and, and most mild to moderate forms of depression, for example. Now, here's why I'm saying focus on exercise for that. Your life is so hectic and there's a lot of stress in it. And if your workouts become a stress relief for you, and that's the way you view it, your odds of being consistent are much, much higher. So what does this look like? workout wise. Well, you don't have access to equipment and it sounds like your, your schedule can be kind of crazy. So I would say 15 to 30 minutes every day. That's it. 15 mm -hmm. to 30 minutes every single day. I would stick to bands or suspension trainers or body weight. And when you're doing the workout, I want you to think to yourself, stress relief. So sometimes that means mobility. Other times that's going to mean I'm going to do 15, 30 minutes of harder stuff. Other times it may mean I'm going to practice, you know, this one exercise I'm trying to get Go better for at. for a walk. Yeah, just do that. It'll make a huge difference in your – because the issue here is consistency. That's going to be the big challenge. So if you look at it that way, it'll make the biggest difference. We do have two programs that are very convenient for people who travel, right? So we have MAPS uh, Anywhere and MAPS Suspension. If you mm -hmm. don't have those, I can send those to you. And you can pick and pull from there workouts you could do pretty much anywhere. So I, I've trained uh, a lot of clients, a lot of clients with a similar situation, maybe not a, the exact same profession as you, but they're home with me. We're training, we're training hard, we're consistent. Their, their stress level's kind of lower because they're not on the go and they're building muscle and they're feeling great. And then boom, here comes a one month, two month, maybe three to six month even trip where they're, where the stress level is going to go up, their sleep uh, is going to go down and uh, they're not going to have access. And the, the biggest mistake that my clients would make like this, and I'd always have to remind them is, listen, you got to be okay with the fact that you're not going to maintain what we've been doing right now. You got to just be okay with, we're not going to be lifting four or five days a week for an hour and you eating perfect every day. And so we've got to kind of modify and be okay with that. So the, the things I would have to get them to do is, okay, if we've been training and eating this way, if 
if we re if we reduce your training and your movement significantly now that we're on the road, uh, you also got to manipulate the the food a little bit. So I would have them, and it would the easiest thing for my clients is I like this is where I like to meal skip. So we 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 we're training consistently, we're eating consistently. Now they're on the road or they're sedentary for a lo large part of the day, or they're not getting very much sleep. So I'd say, listen, let's take the you know the meal that you normally have at two o'clock, or maybe your first meal or your last meal, and we're going to eliminate that when you're when you're on the road and you don't get a lot of movement. And then I would give them a program like Maps Anywhere or the Suspense suspension trainer and say, here, all you, you don't need anything but bands or the suspension trainer. The days that you have a good hotel room, you got a great night's rest, mm -hmm. get after the workout, follow it. The days that you wake up and you didn't have a good night's rest or you had a lot of stress, don't just chalk it up and go eat tacos or some bullshit. Go for a walk. Go for a walk or do some working inward. So I want you focused on on feeling good and taking care of yourself, not so focused on your your you know muscle goals or fat loss goals. Are here we're all. It's like what Sal said. What all the things you're doing when you're on the road is to optimize your job and your performance and your mental health and and what you do for a living. And don't worry when you get back with me and you're back home and we got the gym and we have some time. Then we'll go after it hard again. Yeah, very similarly. I had clients, you know, in your situation too, uh, and that's why we created those programs. But um, you, you know, and to view them in terms of like uh, you know being restorative and being somewhere where you can go to kind of de-stress, but also. Uh, I had my clients like first thing in the morning, that was like basically their cup of coffee was yes. that 10 minute uh, supercharger workout where it's just a very basic workout uh, that you could do consistently. It didn't take up a lot of time. Uh, it made you feel really good, really energized and, and got you out and started your day on the right foot. So I, honestly, I think like if you can uh, really just dedicate uh, that, that, that first instance in the morning to, uh, you know, getting your bar body sort of charged up, uh, you know, through physical activity, it's going to set the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah. John, if you did, if you did 15 to 30 minutes every day and it could be something different every day, just again, listen to your body, you know, that's, that's, that's probably going to average out to two to three hours of structured exercise a week. That's not bad. That's like going to the gym two or three days a week, right? Except you're doing 15, 30 minutes every single morning. I'm sure some mornings you're going to feel better and you could do more. So what you do is you just set your alarm and you wake up a little earlier and you go into this routine. Sometimes it's going to be stretching and mobility. Other times it'll be suspension trainer, strength training, or resistance bands. Other times it might be a walk or it might be 15 to 30 minutes of meditation or mindfulness. But if you do it every single day for a little bit of time, it's easier to be consistent with your schedule than it is to carve out an hour and a half at a gym. I also don't know if you've... if. I don't know if you've connected these these dots yet or not, John, but there's something that is really common with someone like you. Uh, we've all gone through this too, is you got a night of work where you like, say you grind all the way till like a, you know, midnight or one in the morning and it was just a long day, stressful day. And then you got to be back up early next day and you didn't sleep good whatsoever. And we've talked about what happens with cortisol levels. And then all of a sudden, that that next day, you have these weird cravings. You hadn't thought about jack, right. jack in the box right. since you were a kid, or all of a sudden you want this fried, greasy food. That's a that's very normal for that to happen. And if you know that ahead of time, that oh shit, this was a bad night. You put on kind of like your your defense mode that day, like you know what, I know my body's going to be wanting this food or doing that. So getting fed with something good and healthy and balanced early, and then just kind of making that a day where you're walking and just staying active. You don't need to get after it, but just being mentally prepared that you knew that you got a bad sleep day, you better be prepared for that craving that's going to kick around 10, 11, or noon of wanting shit that you normally wouldn't even want. And that's where this spiral effect happens is I get shitty sleep. I don't feel, I didn't, I didn't move very much. I was stressed out. And then on top of that, now my body's craving this greasy food and I'm just hungry because I haven't slept much and I'm tired. And then you just do it. And then that's where the spiral happens. Yeah. So being aware of that is, is, is huge just to know it's coming. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. And if I yep. might add, uh, we're on a tour bus and we're lugging equipment back and forth. I'm curious, does any of that constitute as physical exertion or activity towards workout goals? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally, okay. man. I mean, you're moving. You're, you know, it's, it's of course, absolutely. And it's not always symmetrical. That's the fear. It's not, you know, planned. It's, you know. Uh, that's scary. okay. Those are the days that you allow yourself to eat a little more calories. And then the days when you find yourself sitting at the desk, or working all day and not moving, those are the ones you got to be mindful of pulling back a little bit. That's where this, 
that, I think that's one of the hardest things is like when you get on like a, a plan where you're, when you're home and you're consistent, I mean, you're training, you're moving. It's predictable. Yeah, it's predictable where when you're, when you do something like this, you've got to be kind of mentally aware of like, oh shit, this is a day when I didn't move at all. I need to, I need to, that's, and that's how I, I would tell clients to keep it easy for them. I just say on those days, drop a meal, you know, whatever you would normally do, you know, you didn't move very much, drop a meal on those. And then the days when you are, you're moving hell of equipment, sweating while you're just doing your normal job. Well, shit, that's the day you feed that body. Make sure it's taken care of. Okay. No, it makes perfect sense. Thank you, guys. No problem, John. We'll send you maps anywhere and map suspension, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Thank right. you, man. Yeah, that... Uh, Those, this is hard. Yeah. It is. This is, this is really hard. I'll tell you what, um, you know, obviously, all of us have been training a long time. I've been doing it myself for a long time, and I'm always... I'm typically pretty consistent because I figured that out for myself a long time ago. It It's not about going to the gym and building muscle and looking good when I got really stressful stuff happening in my life. I literally go to the gym and it's it's mental and psychological. It's That's it, 100%. Yeah. And it keeps you consistent that way. So what's the end result? Well, the end result is you're much more consistent and you get the mental benefit from it. So exercise is not just developing an aesthetic physique and looking great. It's so much more than that. And if people realize that, then they, and my gosh, I'm so stressed out. You know what I should do? 15 minutes of, you know, exercise or activity. The truth is though, not, and this is where we're, we're different, right? Like I totally identify with this as a, uh, as a challenge for myself. Like, uh, you've been able to build that for yourself. I mean, of the, the three of us, I think Justin would agree too. Like, you know, you were the one who rain or shine, stress or no stress, fucking long, like you don't miss your workout. You've connected those dots. You've found a way to always do that where I was more of the person who was very uh, on or off. Yeah. I'm d When I'm on, I'm dialed. When I'm training consistent. All or nothing. Yeah, all yeah. or nothing. And so as I got older and you know would see these patterns and realize like I'm not always going to be all the way on, how do I adjust my life? Yeah. So, and, and it's it's amazing. You don't have to do, and I'm, I'm in a situation right now. I'm just coming off of COVID. I didn't train for almost three weeks. What I've learned to do over all these years and mistakes that I've made in the past is, okay, when I'm not moving that much and I'm off the wagon a little bit, I've got to adjust my eating. I've yeah. got to be aware. I've got to scale way back on that because I'm not putting the work in. And then I don't have to do a lot. You do a, a do a so solid one workout or two workouts in the week, especially if you're doing the good movements. That'll send it, and you keep the diet in check. You'd be surprised how fit you'll maintain, especially for somebody who's actually been exercising for many years of their life. The body, the body is unbelievably resilient. It remembers it, all that muscle you've had before. Yep. So as long as I get in there and touch some weights, do some exercises, and I keep, uh, I keep my calories in check, you can you can make it through a rough two or three months of a weird schedule where you're off. But it's the and I know it hit home with them when I told them that about the stress and the sleep and then craving bad food. It's the trying to keep up with your schedule of mm -hmm. training before. It's the inevitable, oh shit, long day of work, stress, didn't get no sleep, and then craving some bullshit, and then the spiral happens, and then you fall off the wagon completely, and then you ride it off, and you just say, ah, fuck it, I'm yeah. I'm already eating bad, I'm not sleeping good, I'm not getting my four days a week. have another donut. Right, where you've just got to learn to recognize that stuff and scale back on the food and and just getting that getting that gym a couple times that's one approach or what both of you suggested which is just make 15 minutes mm -hmm. you know which sometimes i think that's harder for an on the, on the wagon off the wagon type of person that just adjust them calories man all right our next caller is ariel from oklahoma ariel how can we help you hi how's it going Good. um so a little bit about me i'm 18 and I'm actually a rock climber, but um, right now I'm at school. So during the week, I kind of just focus on lifting, strength. Um, and my question is actually in regards to a standing ab wheel rollout. Um, a little bit of context. I do a lot of work on the bar and rings for abs. I can do like a front lever. I do a lot of L-sits, toes to bar, but I've never been able to do a full standing um, to the ground ab wheel rollout. So I guess my question is, do you have any specific programming or advice for um, accomplishing that? Um, and what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, first off, 
That is a very yeah, hard a, exercise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure You're that you know who else Sal can't, can't do that right now. I was just going to say, you know who else can't do a standing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, legit. So that's a really, really hard exercise. Okay, do you have you identified uh, where the breakdown is when you, when you tr go for it? Do you feel the breakdown in your core and low back? Does it feel like your arms and shoulders give out? Good question. Do you have any idea um, where you feel it? Yeah, I I think really it's specifically like on that last little bit, locking it out, getting the full extension overhead. Um, so I guess probably shoulders and a little bit like kind of the thoracic region. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's okay. So someone like you and I saw, I, I you know, you wrote a question and you, you, you talk about a lot of the exercises. Your core is probably pretty strong. It's the breakdown oftentimes with people like you, especially females, is actually the, the the shoulder stability and strength and not so much the core, at least someone like yourself who trains their core so much. So here's a couple things you could do. One, I would recommend uh, heavy dumbbell pullovers, mm -hmm. which will help that type of strength and focus on the range of motion and build your strength up on that exercise and treat it like a strength exercise, like you would do squats or deadlifts or overhead presses. So that'll help you there. The second thing is when you do your standing ab wheel rollout to practice them, you can start by just doing a negative. In other words, get into position and slowly roll yourself out and then lay down on the floor. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a rep. And the goal is to, sl to slow that down each time to the point where you can make it super controlled. Then from there, you can slowly start to attempt coming back up. But get that negative yeah. portion under control first. Have you done um, Supermans with the uh, rings? Uh a little bit, not really. I uh, are you recommend no. are you recommending the pullover? That yeah. So that's what the pullovers Superman, with suspension with, trainer, with suspension trainer, or the rings. Yeah, it's, yeah. And in terms of too, like anchor push ups and things like that. Like what Sal's sort of alluding to is just like the the upper body strength portion of it, because your abs or your core in general is going to be pretty strong in terms of like what you're describing with your exercises. But I think developing. Uh, you know, that strength there, especially with the uh, instability with the rings or the, the suspension trainer uh, and, and to be able to then uh, anchor, you know, one side and reach with the other arm and then both arms together and then also like real deep even flies and, and, and get into that will help a lot. Are you, Ariel, are you familiar with what Justin's trying to explain the Superman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like reaching overhead, kind of like a Y raise, but lower to the ground. No, yeah, like, it's, like, it's the opposite. The opposite. So, so I'm I'm okay. like a, a doing a push up in a sense. Like okay, and okay. you can why this is why what Justin is saying is this is the exercise to get you to do what you want to do because it is the it's the perfect regression to what you're trying to do because sure. you're because you have to have core strength and stability and what's beautiful about it is however far you walk, how far you walk away from the anchor point, the yes. easier it'll be. So like with a client like you-, you progressively increase- That's right. Intensity. I would start, like Justin's saying, like you might not be able to start from the push-up position yet. That's going to be the most challenging position. I would have you like- let's in, Walk forward in, or yeah, away in, from Envision the, the suspension trainer above your head and it's the ropes are hanging down in front of you, rings or a suspension trainer. You grab hold of them in front of you. You take about two steps forward- and then you you simulate the exact same movement you do on the ab roller where you roll, let your body kind of fall forward and your arms come up and you resist with your core and your lats and then you pull yourself back forward. And you do that with a couple steps out. You get good at it. Then you back up a little bit. Then you mm -hmm. back up a little bit okay. to eventually get so into- So you're just- yeah. yeah, adjusting the lever. Exactly, kind of. you're right. adjusting the lever and the difficulty of it, and then eventually you get to the position that Justin's talking about, where you're in the full right. push-up. You're, you're position. directly underneath the anchor Th point. That's right. You're directly underneath, and then you let your arms come forward, and then you're opening up in that. Front. But that that will be the that's like the once you reach there, you're going to be able to do it with the ab roller. So you're going to have to start by stepping forward a little bit and and doing that. You do that movement, and then I have one more I would add to this. Um, because it, uh, like an isometric type of movement it would be overhead carries with kettlebells or if you don't have kettlebells, then dumbbell will work. But uh, just strengthening your, your entire body in that position and do carries, that with what Justin is saying, uh, you will yeah. accomplish Increase this movement. Increase your end range strength. Yeah. You know what? Um, do you have MAP suspension? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, that would be a great program yes. yeah, we'll for someone like you. Rock climber, the kind of strength you're looking for is kind of full body, stable. It's got the exercises that we're talking about. I think there'll be a perfect program for someone like you to follow. So we'll send that over to you. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks, Ariel. And thanks for listening to the show. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much. I really look up to uh, you guys and all the information you put out. So thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank Keep you. Keep kicking ass. Yeah, it's cool to have uh, people that age uh, listening to our podcast. Yeah. You know, that's really yeah, good because she's guys. seeking out good information. <laughs> well, we were just talking off. We were joking <laughs> off air that I said it's amazing that anybody under the age of 20 listens to us with our dad jokes and shit. Doug, could you pull up? I don't know if you can do this in the time. Um, I'm trying to remember if we did build those. In, I don't know if we built those in suspension train or not. Superman's? Yeah. Yeah, they're in, yeah, there. They're in there. They're in there? They're yes. in there. It's just, um, yeah, it may be more regressed, like you said, like it's out a little further out oh, good. Of, of the anchor point. But yeah, to, to, to your point is, you know, that's the beauty of the suspension trainers. You can really manage the intensity just yeah. by it's, That walking. is the exact, I would, we should do a YouTube video on this. So maybe if you can remember maybe a Friday fitness tip or something, you could do this to show, yeah, I'll the, do a Friday yeah. fitness tip. show the regression to it and then how to progress all the way to that. Cause that it's is a great a exercise. Great movement. Yeah. That is exact that for what she's trying to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, how cool is it? You got an 18 year old, you know, kid who's like, Hey, I want to do this, yeah. <laughs> this really yeah, hard, really, yeah. do this really like extremely hard exercise. Yeah, I don't think cool. I can do that right super, now. That, super, 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 super. I love rad. that mentality. Yeah. Look, if you like our information, if you like the podcast, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there and check out all of our free guides that can help you develop a better, more fit, healthy body and mind. Also, you can find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. Me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 